Okay, this lesson is going to be on Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure. And basically the law states that the total pressure in a container is the sum of the pressure of each gas um, that would exert if it were alone in the container. So the total pressure is the sum of the partial pressure. So for instance, we have a certain volume here. We have these gray molecules floating around and that exerts a pressure. We have a same volume container, and we have some red molecules floating around in the container, and that exerts a pressure. If we combine those two gases in the same volume container, then the total pressure in that container will be the sum of its parts. And I want to stress on Dalton's Law of Pressure Pressure that this simply simple equation only holds true if the volume in the container is the same across the board. So if it is, you can use this simple equation and can solve for anything. So let's try a, a problem here. So no, depending on how many gases are in there, P1 to P infinite, total pressure will be the sum of its parts. So here we have a problem. A uh, mixture of neon and argon gas exerts a pressure, total pressure of 239. The partial pressure of neon alone is 1.84 atm. What is the partial pressure of argon? So since this is in the same container, we're just going to simply use the Dalton's law of partial pressure. So total pressure equals the pressure of neon plus the pressure of argon. Well, since we know what neon is, 1.84, and then this will be x. And you solve for the pressure of argon, and x will equal. So do a little bit of math and you'll find out that the pressure of argon is going to be 0 0.55 atms. Pretty simple when the volume is constant across the board. Well, if there's a relationship, pressure and, and is so related to number of moles that we have a nice little relationship that we can derive. So total pressure, um, each pressure has its own little ideal gas law. So N1, so on and so forth. In the same container, where temperature and volume are the same, then really this boils down to this nice equation. And it shows a great relationship here. That the total pressure in a container is the sum of its moles of those gases times R times T divided by V. So that's a really great equation to use. So let's do this by example. So, a mixture of helium and oxygen can be used in scuba diving tanks to prevent the bends. For a particular dive, 46 liters of helium at 25 degrees Celsius and 12 liters of O2 at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atm were pumped into a tank with a volume of 5 liters. Calculate the partial pressure of each gas and the total pressure in the tank. So, this is a two-part question. So, to kind of break this down a little bit, I sketched that little diagram. So we have helium with a very different volume from the oxygen. We're going to actually combine those two gases into a container that's 5 liters. So yeah, the pressure should definitely increase a lot since we're going from a very, very big container to a very small container to do this. You cannot, again, use Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure, so you cannot add 1 plus 1 equals 2 because my volumes are not the same. What we do need to count is the number of moles that are, are being sent over. So for this equation, we're going to use the ideal gas law. For each one. So we want to find, for helium, we want to find how many moles of helium is in this container. Same goes for this container as well. We want to find the number of moles. Oops how many moles of oxygen gas are in this tank. So go ahead and use this equation. You have your given here and solve for n for each one. And go ahead and click pause and try that. OK, you should have gotten this. So the moles of helium, I got 1.9. And the moles of O2, I got to be 0.49. Okay, you should have got those. So 
We're almost there. All right, so now that we have the moles of each, we're again going to use the ideal gas law. But this time we have some different conditions here. Because now we have now count how many moles are going to be transferred over into the big container. Well, our pressure of, we know our new volume now. So our new volume here is going to be 5 liters. For each gas, I'm going to use PV equals NRT. So for instance, for helium, I'm going to plug this in here. And then I know my R, I know my T. I can now find my pressure of HE using the ideal gas law again for this new change in the volume. So we're going to plug this equation in again, but this time we're using volume as 5 liters, and we're using the number of moles here to find out my pressure of helium. I will also use the same equation again to find O2. So go ahead and try that. Go ahead and click pause and see what you get for your numbers. All right, so for me, I have this set up this way, and my pressure of helium equals 9.3 atm and my pressure of O2 after calculating that I got 2.4 atm okay so that answers the first part the pressure of each gas well after that total pressure is just the sum of its parts because now they're all in the same container in the same volume, you can just simply just add them up. And you should get a total volume of 11.7 atm. So the key point on this problem is the volume is not the same across the board. You have to compensate for those and make those changes. Let's try one second. Okay, this is a very, very classic example in gas laws. Here we have a flask that's connected, and these are actually valves here. So these right now these valves are closed. I have a certain amount of volume of this gas. This is my pressure, certain volume, pressure, volume of pressure for each gas when this, the container is closed. Well, when these valves are open, what is the each partial pressure and the total pressure at 25 degrees Celsius? So my temperature is crossed across the board, but my volume is now changing. Well, the way we're going to solve this is we're going to use P1V1 equals P2V2, since my temperature is constant. And I'm going to use this equation for each gas after it's closed. So P1 would be, for instance, CH4 will be this. My volume 1 would be this. My new volume is when you open up all the valves. My new volume will be 4 plus 1.5 plus 3.5. That's going to be a 9. So that's going to be my new volume. And then for each gas, you're going to use this equation and solve for P2 for each gas. So go ahead and try that. Uh, plug them in for each number and find out what you get for the pressure of each gas after you open the valves. Okay, so you should have something set up like this for each gas. And, all right, so you should have gotten 1.78 ATM for this one. This gas should have gotten 0 0.76 ATM. Six looks ugly. And then this one should be a 0 0.29 ATM. So using Boyle's law, you were able to find out the pressure for each gas. Well, the total pressure is just when you add up all three. So 1.76 plus 0 0.76 plus 0 0.29 equals total pressure is going to equal 2.81. I'm not sure if I forgot if they asked that or not, but we can solve it. All right, so here are some examples of using Dalton's law of partial pressure.